Hey guys, Matthew here, and today I want to bring you guys an analysis of Path of Exile versus Last Epoch versus D3. Uh, these are three games that I have played pretty extensively. I've, uh, you know, reached the end game on all of those games. Uh, I'll give you guys a bit of a, you know, a history of me with those games. Obviously, Path of Exile is my main game. It's what I'm known for the most. Um, so clearly, you know, I know, I, I know the ropes. Uh, Last Epoch, I started fairly recently, but I've played a good amount. I have a character who is in the mid-level 90s, capable of farming every single thing in the game. At this point, it's just basically uh, grinding for perfect gear, if you will. T6-T7s. Uh, if you saw my first impression video, you would know what that means. But essentially, it's um, the equivalent of, I guess you could say, influence items in Path of Exile. They can only drop, they can't be crafted, they can't be gambled. Uh, so yeah, the very very end game stuff characters able uh, capable of doing arena probably around wave 200 uh, Which is not crazy high, but it's pretty respectable uh, And Diablo 3 for those who don't know in one of the earlier seasons. I actually pushed as a crusader and I was rank 1 uh, On the crusader ladder until I quit which I believe was a greater rift 47 and The world record in that season for crusader was 51 um, so I wasn't quite up there, uh, by, by the actual end of the season, but I was actually rank one, uh, when I quit. So I have played a fairly, uh, extensive amount of D3 as well. I've came back for seasons after that as well, but I never pushed because realistically after just like 10 to 12 hours of D3, I'm basically just done with the season, uh, as that's how long it takes to get like Paragon 500, as insane as that sounds. Okay. So now that I've been given a bit of a rundown on my experience with those games, uh, I want to give you guys, I guess, you could say a recommendation on who I think these games uh, are for, like their target audience, as well as a little bit of analysis of the gameplay itself. So let's just start with the shortest one, and that would be D3. Now, D3 basically has negative difficulty. As I said, you know, getting to Paragon 500 literally takes a few hours. Uh, with a good plan and a good build, of course. Uh, and the thing about this game is that it's all about unique items and it's all about set items, right, in Diablo. Because of that, there is no real replayability. You are farming for those set items, those uh, those unique items, and if you're not farming just for a regular one, right, you're going to be farmed for an ancient, and then eventually for a primal ancient, and that's it. And... Once you have all that, then it's just basically trying to get the same Primal Lane champ, but that's got a little bit better stats and a little bit better stats so that you can craft, you know, the the, uh, the reroll one of the stats to be a better one. You know, it's it's got very, very, very little in terms of replayability. And then the thing about it is that you basically have no difficulty whatsoever in the game. And then eventually you reach basically your highest tier Greater Rifts. And then the difficulty just goes to the moon, right? Because it's literally physically impossible for you to do it. So the only thing that you can do once you've reached this, this point on your character where you cannot go further, the only possibility that you have is basically to start fishing for the right greater rift. So what that means is fishing for the right pylons in the right locations. Uh, for example, a damaged pylon before a boss or fishing for the right mob kinds because obviously the uh integrated rift the way that progression goes is the more monsters you kill but different monsters give a different amount of progression so the mob kind the pylons the layout is also extremely important some layout will have better density uh and better density means you know an easier time actually uh filling up the bar and that's that's really all it is and after that, it's hours and hours and hours and hours, literally endless hours just fishing for the right layout in order to do one higher grade rifts and then one higher and then one higher. But the thing is, you get basically 95 to 98% of the game done within just a few hours, literally just a few hours. And then after that, it's endless amounts of hours just to try to get plus one, plus one, plus one. So it becomes very, very, very boring very quickly. Like I said, for me, anywhere between 12 to 24 hours of playtime in a new season, and I'm just done. Uh, I'm not having fun anymore. Uh, it feels like my character will never really get stronger. Uh, and the only thing I'm getting is extra paragons, which is just basically base stats, which is really, really boring, at least to me. 
Okay, now let's talk about Last Epoch. Last Epoch is actually very interesting when it comes to that because the game starts off extremely easy. Uh, for the for the, the entirety of the campaign, the game is super, super easy. The only thing that you need to make sure of is that you're basically capped on your resistances or at least the most important resistance in the act or in the chapter that you're in. So for example, in chapter two, there's a ton of void damage. So you want to have some void resistance. In another chapter, maybe it's physical. Another chapter, fire, right? So you want to basically be capped out on that specific resistance for that specific chapter, and that's it. If you're capped out on that res, you're not. You're basically just going to walk over the game. Of course, if you play a better build, this is going to be even easier, but it's very, very easy. And this actually goes on into the monolith farming, which is the equivalent of maps in Path of Exile as well, until you reach Empowered Monoliths. Now, Empowered Monoliths are actually basically uh, the, um, the equivalent of, I guess, Delirious Maps in Path of Exile. Uh, and you're actually going to reach those fairly early, maybe in just four to five days of playtime. It really comes down to how experienced you are, but realistically, it's not very difficult. But then when you do get too empowered, the difficulty rises significant or raises significantly, like a lot. It becomes very, very difficult, especially as you're going through these monoliths, because the way that monoliths work is that when you complete a monolith, it's going to add specific stats that are going to make the next X amount of monoliths harder. So for example, you could complete a monolith and for the next like five or whatever monoliths, the monsters are gonna have 50% increased health. Now the next monolith you do, they're gonna have, I don't know, 50% increased damage. The next monolith you do, you'll, they'll have like 80% cooldown recovery speed, right? So every monolith that you're doing is adding uh, multiple monoliths worth of stats that are making them harder and harder so it's basically getting harder and harder and harder every single monolith until you reach the boss and then the boss is going to be the hardest now you basically have two mini bosses or two events i guess you could call them in the monoliths and then after these two events you have the boss so i think it goes something like around 10 to 15 then you'll have your first event 10 to 15 second event maybe 5 to 10 and then you'll have the boss so in order to do an, a fully empowered monolith grind it'll it'll be about maybe 30 maps uh which is you know pretty, probably about 30 to 45 minutes so there's a fair amount of grind now why do you want to actually be farming these empowered monoliths is because that's where you're going to get most of your loot but not only that this is also where you're going to get your blessings and it's very very important to farm good blessings and all of these things, including the blessings and your monolith farming and all that, are tied to your character, not to your account. So what that means is that if you make a new character, you're, you're going to have to refarm those blessings. Now, the difficulty goes down and down and down and down as you are getting better gear. When you're farming these monoliths, you're going to get, you know, T15, T20, T6, T7s. You're going to get very, very good pieces of gear. Now, a T6 and T7, I already mentioned, is gear that is purple, only dropped. A T15 is a piece of gear with three T5s, T5s being the highest potential craftable tier. A T20 is a piece of gear with four T5s. Uh, which again is the highest craftable piece of gear so that's kind of like some some lingo that you need to understand a little bit uh, but very very simple as your gear gets better the difficulty gets easier and easier and easier but the thing is once you get to the point where you're just steamrolling empowered monoliths then you can basically start doing the arena and what the arena is is basically the ladder for that game and this goes into the stratosphere. It literally never stops scaling. And most builds will probably get to around 200, 200 and something. People who are extremely good at the game can get around like 300. And then people who are extremely good at the game and who have basically broken builds can get upwards of 400. But your goal is probably going to be to aim at like 150 to 200 because that's where you're getting a like a really really solid amount of xp uh because the scaling in the arena is based on your character level so let's say your character level is 90 the first wave in the arena is all going to be level 90 and the, the monsters are all coming to you and there's no stopping right so there the xp per hour is pretty insane in arena and that's the best way to get xp in the game so 
what do I think basically about these two different systems empowered monolith farming and arena I think it's very good but the thing is it's, it's fairly shallow the replayability is much greater than d3 but much lesser than path of exile as I'll speak about in a minute but the thing is the difficulty is always, always rising, so you can pretty much just force yourself to keep coming back to try to get to a higher point, a higher point, a higher point. And this is really good so long as you're not somebody who can play, you know, six plus hours per day, because then it would get pretty redundant, or at least for most people. Now, there are some people who are able of doing the exact same thing for endless amounts of hours. Think of, for example, PoE racers or you know whatever uh and not get bored but i think the majority of people do get bored after doing the same exact thing for too long so the only problem right now with last epoch is that it's missing some very end game content fortunately for us right now the upcoming biggest patch is literally the addition of i believe two new end game systems uh so it's going to diversify the end game so that you're not just farming gear in empowered uh, empowered monoliths and then farming arena to see how high you can go you're going to be able to basically interlace that with other different mechanics that are going to be coming out and i think that's going to add a lot of depth to the game a lot of replayability now i say that and i've played hundreds of hours of this game already within the the, the couple weeks that i've had it uh or the few weeks that i've had it i should say and I'm not bored at all. I could easily play this game another six to eight hours a day for the next weeks and maybe even a couple months without getting bored. Because it's really, really well done. It's extremely high on quality of life features, such as, for example, vacuum looting, uh, you know, in-game filters so that you can easily figure out what you want or don't want to see. And, of course... Uh, you know, the blessing farming and the farming of endgame items as any ARPG, you're always just basically going for better loot. So while your T15s or your T20s are really, really nice, what's actually much nicer is getting a T21 or even a T22, and that is really, really difficult. So there's a lot of replayability if you're trying to really min-max your character, and that's kind of what I enjoy doing, especially in a game where there's no current trade or economy. It's really just based on your character. Instead of making 10 mediocre characters, I'd rather put all that time into one character and try to make an absolute beast out of it. Uh, so that's why, you know, I've been playing a lot, and I, I haven't felt, like, bored at all so far. Um... And then obviously we have Path of Exile. Now Path of Exile is actually interesting because it's actually kind of the opposite of Last Epoch. Path of Exile starts off extremely difficult. For example, Mervale, the endgame boss of the first act, is quite literally one of the hardest bosses in the game. I struggle to kill Mervale way more than I struggle to kill Cyrus, way more than I struggle to kill Uber Elder, way more than I struggle to, fear, uh, to do even the invitations. Mervale is broken. So the difficulty of the game is extremely, extremely difficult around the start of the game, and then it drastically drops whenever you basically get to maps. When you get to maps, all you need for the most part is going to be a four link on a character. Uh, if you're playing a good build, a five link otherwise, which is like two chaos at the start of a league uh, for a random corrupted five link, like a bow or like a chess piece or whatever. Uh, and then you just start rolling content and you roll content and it gets easier and easier as you get upgrades until around the point you get to red maps. Now, when you get to red maps, especially T14 and above, the game actually climbs in difficulty a lot, especially because of the Conqueror quest lines, the Conqueror mobs that are added to your maps. For example, the, you know, Alice Hesman, if you if you don't have a lot of chaos resistance, the little uh, snakes can literally one shot you. Uh, or for example, the... Um, uh the ground effects from um what's his name baron you know can pretty much just nuke your mana pool and then get you killed because you can't even use a movement ability for example so it gets a lot a lot harder but again as you start getting upgrades on your build getting levels you know getting your uber lab and all that good stuff it becomes easier and easier and easier to the point where you're just face rolling the content once you have good enough gear and then comes Delirious Map. Delirious Map is basically throwing the game way back up to where it's nearly impossible. Only a select amount of builds can actually interact with the content. Or, of course, you can abuse certain things or get a headhunter. And then, again, the game becomes extremely easy and it's a steamroll. 
and then it's a steamroll for the rest of the game realistically it doesn't get harder once you have the headhunter acquired the game is just easy right easy breezy you're just rolling through same thing if you're abusing certain mechanics like for example this league what was really popular is self poison uh, especially with things like cast on crit for example um or even bv you could self poison get upwards of like 1200 percent increased damage 600 percent move speed and then you're basically zooming through the map at the speed of light and one shotting literally everything despite the fact that you have very very little gear now are they going to be fixing that in the upcoming 3.14 league quite possible we don't know uh but even if it wasn't that oops my bad even if it wasn't for that it would be the same result if you had a headhunter for example right headhunter would also basically nullify the entirety of the content in the game and again it would, be, it would become very 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 easy so looking at it this way what do i think or at least what are my recommendations or not necessarily recommendation but what's my analysis on the i guess you could say target of these different video games well, Diablo 3 doesn't really target anybody except the people who basically just come back for nostalgia's sake. Uh, you know, try to push for a couple days, the initial weekend, just blast, forget about everything else. And then when Monday comes, they they basically shelve the game. They never touch it again uh, until the next, you know, season, pretty much. Now we have Last Epoch. Last Epoch is, I guess, an in-between. Last Epoch, in my opinion, is perfect for the people who play anywhere between one to three-ish, maybe four hours per day, maybe even one to three, I guess. Uh, you know, for the very uh, casual people, uh, because they are going to be able to incrementally upgrade their characters without actually having to farm currency to just buy gear from other people they can actually solo self found their own characters now of course trading is coming to the game which is does, which means it's not going to be necess a necessity to solo self farm your characters but you're able to basically even with very minimal playtime farm for upgrades because of the way the crafting system works because of the shard system which is absolutely fantastic by the way uh you're able to incrementally get your character better and better and better in order to make these empowered echoes uh or the arena easier and easier so that you can go further and faster when it comes to empowered echoes so that you can get better gear so that you can do it even faster or go even further into the arena so last epoch in my opinion is like the perfect game for somebody who's more casual but who really really loves arpgs but who doesn't have basically their whole life to dedicate to that arpg so that's who i would recommend last epoch to if you've ever found yourself playing poe and you never get to red maps every single league meanwhile you're playing almost every single day last epoch is a perfect game for you if you play poe you do get to the end game but you feel like you can never actually get a character to feel good because you never have enough currency because you're always behind the inflation because you know limited playtime. last epoch is a perfect game for you if you're a massive sweaty nerd or you've been playing for ages and you know the game in and out then poe is the game for you this applies to people like myself now why is that because it, as a full-time content creator somebody who plays the game for a living quite quite literally right you want to play something that has incredible replayability something that you can play for hours and hours and hours on end without ever feeling like you've finished playing the game this is what path of exile offers path of exile offers literally a second life if you will to your actual life you can basically dictate 12 hours of, of your day every single day to path of exile and never really feel like you've actually beat the game because of there's it's a very mature game there are so many different systems in the game and all things that you can interact with and all things that feel different so that you don't get bored at, even if you're spending hundreds and hundreds of hours playing the game and that's pretty much how i see it i see path of exile as like the perfect game for the people who want to basically escape reality and just play video games 
and never feel like they're getting bored for at least a few months or, or a couple months and then you know they can always just detox for the last month of the league play other stuff and then come back for the next league and the cycle repeats itself that does sound unhealthy and that's because it is but the amount of hours that people spend on path of exile is indeed unhealthy myself included now last epoch is a lot more casual friendly something that you can easily play for a couple or a few hours a day and feel like you're constantly progressing your characters and feel like you can actually play multiple different characters because you don't have to invest you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours in order to be able to reach the end game content on a single character which means that you basically have a lot more replayability uh, and also a lot more diversity when it comes to your builds and there's also a really really nice self uh or sorry a nice feeling of self-accomplishment when you are actually crafting your own gear and making progress in this game even for somebody like me i have to say uh it, it feels really really nice and then d3 is like that toxic ex-girlfriend that just booty calls you once every three months you actually end up going because you know you have very little self-respect and that's okay we all do on that note hopefully you guys appreciated my analysis of the difference between poe le and d3 and before i go i want to say a huge thank you to my supporters uh wiccan near kremis justin kevin uh the other justin so nice axel mercury bitizen also flame scorpion richard willie d alex jordan Emil raymond tim scott lost with the map grimoire and nathan as well as a special thank you to everybody on this list and of course anybody else who has supported me in the past or who wishes to remain anonymous hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace